Hello and welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Today I'm going to be talking about a guy that I met at FCI Terre Haute by the name of Stuart Nazet. Before I do, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Please like and share the videos. Okay, let me get right into this. Within the Bureau of Prisons, there's units called the Communications Management Unit otherwise known as CMU. They have one at FCI Terre Haute and they have one at Marion. These units were originally designed for terrorists. Uh, other people got scooped up and thrown in these units that had nothing to do with terrorism and should have never been there. Basically, um, because it, the, the unit looked a little racist, there was a bunch of Muslims that were put in there jihadist jihadist i should say um one of the guys that got put in there and i'm not saying wrongly so but maybe rightly so was the guy named stuart nazette now who's stuart nazette i would encourage everybody after they look at this video or pause right now and go do a little background on stuart nazette astrophysicist planetarian oh god this that's that stuff's way above my above my head I worked for NASA, the Department of Defense. Um, just this, this guy was inside the government, had the highest clearances, was involved in a, a project called Operation Clementine, which believed to have discovered water on the backside of the moon. In fact, I believe that's, that theory is now, it's a theory, but I believe it was now um, supported by their evidence. Okay. Stuart Nazette was arrested and sentenced and convicted for uh, espionage, espionage charges. Basically, what had happened was Stuart got in over his head, uh, owed a bunch of money, credit cards, uh, just living the high life. And you can only go so far in a government contract. Yes, you can make a lot of money, especially guys that do consulting. But Stuart and his wife were living well beyond their means. Inside the government agencies, people were aware of this. So what they did basically was they sent a fake spy at him saying that this guy worked for Israel, the Mossad, uh, and wanted information that Stewart had about the United States government or other projects. Again, read it. You guys can figure it out. And Stewart bit like a big bass. Um, so he took the bait. I think he was actually trying to play double agent, like another somebody else approached him. And he was just caught up in this big mess. Stuart Nazette was sent to the control management unit at Terre Haute. Now, I have never seen inside the, I'm not control, communications management unit. I've never seen inside this unit. Uh, you cannot see inside this unit. I've seen suits go in there. Uh, I know what it is. John Walker Lynn, American Taliban, lived there for years. Basically, they're locked in a unit all day long. They all have single cells. They all get out for TV time. And they get out in the, they have a day room common area. And uh, this is where Nazette lived for years. At some point, it's decided whether these guys really need communication management anymore. And if not, they let them out in general population. And that's where I met Stuart. Stuart, go see his photo. Um, he, he doesn't look like, he looks like uh, a nerd, you know, and, and I think he would take that and not have a problem with me even saying that. Kind of childlike, but a brainiac. Um, I'm going to be honest, and I, and I know if he's going to end up seeing this, and I don't mean this in a bad way, and I think he won't even take it personally. He reminded me of a sex offender. And, and if you go see the photo, you know what I'm saying, and I don't mean that. I'm just saying that's my first impression. But... Uh, after Stewart moved into M Block, where I was housed, uh, he didn't really talk to anybody else but me and a guy named Nick McDougal. I'm a type of person that I'm, I get tired of the same old conversations. Bernie Madoff was a, was a great example. Uh, I wrote it was written in the New York Magazine about me that I was that I I like talking to Bernie because it wasn't like all the bitches and hoes and and criminal stuff that you constantly hear. It wasn't the norm. It was so far outside the norm to talk to him. And Stuart was, was 
actually way more interesting than Bernie Madoff. Um, but Stewart had a hard time adapting in prison just because uh, in his mind he wasn't a criminal no matter what he did or did not do. And, you know, he's not a, not, not a tough guy by no means. Um, in fact, when he was in the control management unit, you know, there was guys that made sex plays at him. He admitted that. I don't think he had a problem saying that. And I think it's in a book that he's written. Uh, guys extorted him a little bit. Matter of fact, the pirate from Captain Phillips, he put the soft press on Stewart. Stewart was, was paying him a little bit. Uh, now, there was a day, me and Stewart talked every day. I got him a cell. You know, I was a white rep in M unit. I got him a cell. I got him all, he, he looked at my cell and realized that I had my cell hooked up. I had a desk mounted on my wall that nobody else had. Of course, Stewart had to have it because he's a writer. Got him hooked up. He didn't care how much he had to pay. I didn't juice him, didn't, didn't jerk him around. Told the guy, the guys not to screw with him. You know, uh, in prison he could be considered a lame. Uh, and I didn't want guys to really take advantage of him. Uh, we became friends. We spoke daily, and there was a day when I told Stewart to come in my cell. And he had talked about doing, not doing, but he talked about drugs in prison and this and that, but he'd never seen Suboxone. And I had a little piece of Suboxone, and I said, Stewart, want to get high? And he's like, what? <laughs> I said, yo, you ever seen Suboxone, Stewart? So I showed him what, it was like a 30 second. That's, uh, if you get a strip, you cut it in 32 pieces. That's what it was. So... I remember when he saw it, he, he was talking to himself, but he's like, they do drugs. They all do drugs. And, and he wasn't talking to me, but he was like, he couldn't believe that maybe I was involved in the drug thing. Now this is 2017, 18. Um, I put it in a spoon. I showed Stuart, you know, what, was, what it was, told him what it was and all that other stuff. A little bit shocked and he kind of ran out of my room. Uh, me and uh, Nick McDougal kind of got a laugh about it later. Uh, within a day or two, Stu came back to me and asked me uh, if I can get him 20 Percocets. Now, I have long been told by guys that were in uh, CMU with Stuart that one of his things was he was trying to get out of prison early all the time. He would gather information, give it to the cops and to try to reduce his sentence. I don't think he'll have a problem admitting that in his books either. Uh, of course, I would never have got students at 30 or 20 Percocets. Uh, th there's, there's, there's just no way I, I would have do something like that. I had access to him, yes. As a matter of fact, a guy in the unit uh, had just offered me a bunch before that. I wasn't interested. But I asked him, I said, Stu, well, what's up, man? Why, why, would you, why do you want 20, 20 Percocets? He said, because he wanted to kill himself. For two days, I kind of talked him off the ledge. He was having a bad time. His, some of his, one of his problems was his emails were getting rejected. Well, or his emails were being held up. He came out of control management unit. Control management unit. I'm sorry, I keep saying control. Communications, my bad. I'm not gonna change this video because I'm up here in the mountains. Communication management, uh, that means that they wanna know everything you have to say. Every phone call, they wanna know everything. So of course, he's not gonna get right out of the general population and be able to have the same kind of correspondence as everybody else. It's just, he was a NASA scientist, okay? He, had, he knows secrets from the US government. In fact, let me say this real quick. I'm going to go off, off the... Um, well, I was talking about his suicide. I'm going to go off in a different direction for a second. Stewart, like a lot of NASA guys, do not like Democrats. Um, one of the things is when Republicans come into office, especially a Republican president, uh, they start funding NASA. Donald Trump, look, he started this whole space agency, Space Force. So... The scientists and NASA people, they, they want the Republicans to get office because they get funding for their projects. These are guys that their whole life's about, you know, science and going to the moon and all that other good stuff. So, of course, they want funding. And every time a Democrat comes in, 
they cut them off. Uh, cut the funding off or limit it. Uh, limit it. Obama just just really try to take out NASA. Well, well, he, he cut a lot of the funding. I believe it was Senator Corcoran out of Texas that Stu got hooked up with. Um, they found kind of found some back channels on how to go about getting funding. Again, he'll he'll address that one day. Stu is writing it. Has written some books while he was in prison. Um. A little bit dense, I've read them, but I hope he comes out with it. I hope he comes out with them soon. I just saw he's calling it Cat's Paw, and there's some really interesting stuff in there, and I would recommend that everybody go buy this guy's book. Um, like I said, there's some stuff that's just, it's kind of a, it kind of gets a little sleepy at times, but there's, there's so much stuff in there that's important. And again, this guy was inside, you know, he was inside our government. Um, so anyway, I know I really believe that Stu was, uh, suicidal. Like I said, he was kind of childlike. Nevertheless, you never know. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've, uh, I'm the real deal. I've been there. I've been on the suicide thing. So that's why I know, um, talked him off the ledge. Uh, he's talking about jumping off and jumping off the tier and hanging himself. That's what he said. He said, I wish I can just tie a rope and jump off and right in front of staff and just kill myself. His issue was with staff. He didn't like his restrictions. Stuart Nazette had warned staff inside of the communications management unit. There, there was an inmate who was going to do something. He was going to kill somebody. This guy was allegedly a, a former member of the Aryan Brotherhood that became a Muslim and that was like on this jihadist thing inside prison. Got a life sentence. In fact, one day this guy took off. I'm not going to put the name out there. Maybe I want a different video. Uh, I've got a lot written that I wrote down notes about that staff had told me. But let me tell you something. Stuart Nazette was spot on. This guy went and killed Christians or attempted to kill many Christians. I think he stabbed too. But he went in and he killed an old man that was a Christian, one of these sovereign citizen guys. And uh, when Stu found out, he was so happy because he knew that that guy was going to do that. That guy had been, uh, he's been radicalized inside of, inside of the control, ma I mean, um, communication management unit with all of the, the real terrorists. There's real, there's real terrorists in there. I mean, there's real, real, there's real guys that needed to be locked up there, ADX or, or you know, that, you know, are harm to the United States in general. So, but Stu called it. He's got some uh, paperwork that, uh, well, that, that can prove a lot of the stuff that he's writing about from being inside the communications management unit. Again, if Katz Paul's the name of the book and he writes this and he releases it, uh, you, it's, it's worth it. It's really worth it. But Stu Nazette, um, he was terrified of leaving. He'd never been in general population except for M unit. Like I said, I kind of had a little soft spot for guys that uh, don't appear to be in all, uh, you know, convicts and wh whatever. He, he, I, I didn't want anybody taking advantage of this guy, and they they didn't. Uh, but when he got transferred, he was being transferred to a low, from a medium to a low, and he was terrified to go through Oklahoma City. He was asked, you know, he was asking everybody. Uh, what can I do? Uh, guy was an AC. He said, hey, you can pay me some money and I'll make sure all my brothers take care of you, this and that. It's chaos. Stupid shit. <laughs> anyway, he ended up in Milan, Michigan, I think. And uh, I saw that he got went home in 2020. Stu Nazette in the communication management unit at Terre Haute ultimately went in general population. Um, you know, institutional snitch for sure I think you'll write a lot about it so that's not putting him in a bad light it's just the truth um, when I see guys like Stu you automatically think don't don't trust this people don't do this because they're gonna tell everybody that ever knew Stuart would knew that he would tell anything that was going on and I know people will go why did you guys put up with that 
Go look at Stu. And that's, that's all I have to say. And Stu, let me tell you something, bud. Don't mean any of this to put you down whatsoever. Uh, you were one of the better conversations that I had in prison. I enjoyed your company. I don't care if you were a prison lame. You're a pleasure to talk to, and I hope you're doing good. Take care.